Well, it's, it's an, an interesting mix. But we have in all this, behind this economic success, I suppose that we have had a very important political background. And uh, I will describe it this way. After the end of Pinochet era, the Concertación, the center-left group of political parties, led the country with this big success. But we have, in some way, in a tacit way, a big, important political consensus, also with the opposition. Then, economic and social measures receive a permanent support beyond the government majority. And this is crucial for countries like the Latin American countries after military dictatorships or uh, internal uh, conflicts like in many countries of the region. This is uh, very important to assert first because if not, it's very understandable to see how, why we have had so big success. It is not just, let's say, um, an economic uh, group uh, established in Ottawa and Santiago developing some economic uh, measures. It is a real political consensus and, of course, some uh, successful uh, government decisions. We have grown steadily and during these 15 years. We will grow this year once again over 6%. And we have reduced poverty from 40% to 13% following the last service in Chile. It is very impressive. But you cannot do that without a broad political support. We have now in Chile uh, social demands very strong because the people say the pie is becoming so big that I would love to have a bigger part of the pie. This happens with the health worker, with teachers, and with other uh, association and worker groups. It is, uh, we face as challenge, and this is the main goal of this government and the coming government, the main challenge in Chile are innovation. We must innovate a lot more. We are doing, we are performing well, but we must do many more. Inequality, we have the globalization of our economy the open market we have has produced a classical market situation that the rich groups are growing much faster and much quicker and much more than the, the lower working groups. We have a country where everybody is performing well in economy, but they, they are earning less than the rich. The, the poor are, are earning much lesser than the rich. And the third uh, important um, challenge we have, we have two concentrated countries demographically. We have almost 40% of the population in Santiago. In this extent, we are almost an empty country. Well, this is absolutely different with the situation in Brazil or even in Venezuela. We have a, we have, we have on, on a strong uh, discussion about education. And we have some social explosions in education. But if you look a little bit about the background, you will understand why it's happening this in Chile. You should think that today, 70% of the students at the universities are the first member in a family that attend a university then the change in education is so radical that it's rather difficult to control the movement. We have had, never had the 600,000 students at university. It is enormous. It's a proportion. We have today about 40% of the people in secondary studies that will attend the university. Then the demand is much bigger than the regular reform process that you have in education. This is an explanation for 
uh, the challenge we have, we face now. And of course, the government is trying to improve, improve a, a, a university education, but also technical and um, technical capability on technical education because the demand is so high. You, ha you have today in Chile, almost every Chilean boy or girl complete 14 years uh, primary and secondary education. This is a lot. Uh, tw I'm sorry, not 14, 12 years. Then the amount of people asking for a place at university, for working places with qualification is so high that they are putting a big difficulty in Chile. For this reason, I mean, it's a rather different the situation we have in Chile compared with other Latin American countries. Well, we have a very, a, a much better situation than in the past. If I tell you how were the relations 40 years ago, for instance, 40 years ago, Chile exported 50% of uh, his goods to Europe, 40 to the United States, and 10% to the rest of the world, Asia, Latin America, all included. Today, we have a big third to Asia, a small third to Europe, 20% to North America, that means uh, uh, United States and Canada included, and a solid 20% in Latin America. And this Latin America is very important because it is the Latin American market is where we sell the most add value goods that we have in Chile on one side. And on the other side, we have a big deficit in trade with Latin America, especially because of the oil and gas uh, supply from different countries. But we have a big surplus with the developed countries, with the United States, Europe, and Japan. So we feel very comfortable in trade with Latin America. We are a very good market for the Latin American countries. And the Latin, Latin American countries plays a role, play a role uh, accepting and receiving our most, uh, let's say, developed goods and services. Now we are supporting, in very strong form, the free trade agreement with Peru, Colombia and Panama. And to show concrete facts, President Bachelet wrote a letter to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, supporting and asking for an approval of this uh, free trade agreement. And we feel it is very important to have free trade agreements with these countries for several reasons. One, because you expand the trade. But secondly, and it's very important because you help to stabilize the realities in that countries. When you have free trade agreements internationally agreed, you must fulfill your commitments. And this is the best gate against populism, against uh, non-responsible behavior of government and uh, entrepreneurship in different countries because you must uh, fulfill what you have agreed. And for this reason, we see two very good uh, arguments to support and to approve this uh, free trade agreement. Then the last, and the last, and another one, it is because Chile is very involved in the reality of this country. We are, we, our main investments are in Colombia and second in Peru. Then we like very much to have in this neighborhood, successful countries like Colombia, like Peru, like Panama. U.S. trade relations or, or relations are booming today. We have grown 150 percent in two years. The changes. Chile has a clear surplus. We exported last year nine point. 9.5 billion dollars, and we imported from the United States 6.5 billion dollars. Then, at first glance, you think this is a good agreement for Chile. It is a good agreement for Chile. We are 
the number 13 among the trade partners with the United States. But if you take into account the number of countries belonging to the United Nations, there are 191, then we are in the upper third. And it is very interesting to look in more detail because last year Chile imported from the United States, importing from the United States $6.5 billion, imported more U.S. goods than Russia, and Russia are 150 million inhabitants, so we are 16. We imported more than Pakistan, other 150 million inhabitants. We imported more than Indonesia, 240 million inhabitants. And we imported more than Colombia, over 40, more than Argentina, 36. Then the 16 million Chileans are interesting market for the very powerful United States. Then we, and we will continue ahead. We are now improving in investments. The American investments were very weak last two or three years. Now they are improving. And we are developing other initiatives related to trade, but also related to scientific development, technological development, education, etc. We have a very good trade relation with the United States. Well, I suppose that nobody denies that uh, that, uh, that happened after the 9-11, that the United States have neglected Latin America a lot. But in the same way, in the same sense, we should uh, realize and recognize that the United States is developing a very active uh, Latin American policy right now. Uh, if you look at the different visits, if I take into account just my country, we have this year four main represent four ministers, American ministers, secretaries, that usually don't, they don't visit Latin America. Uh, we have an, an, a very active change of foreign ministers and economic ministers, treasure, health, and so on. And the same happens in Brazil, if you look at Brazil, Lula meeting President uh, Bush in Camp David, it is a political indication. It is much more than a, than a friendly meeting, and the decision to work together in the biofuel, etc. They are they are uh, capital, political decisions that are shifting the U.S. policy to Latin America. No, no doubt about it. it is. And we feel now, Chile as country, we feel very comfortable. We set up a new, a new political dialogue between Chilean Senate and American Senate. It's very unique. Usually, the American Senate uh, doesn't have this kind of, of friendship group or something like that. Um, we have developed in two months a negotiation to get 100 scholarship for postdoctorate people, paid by us, but America's providing the, the language courses, health services, etc., etc., and the, usually there were long discussions along the years in the past. Now we are, uh, uh, we are working in a very dynamic way, and it is very clear that uh, there is an important shift in, in the U.S. policy to Latin America. There is no other country in the world after the Second World War that had processed and condemned so many violations of human rights as Chile. We have opened today almost 400 process, prosecutions, and we have two jails with about 100 people paying for violation of human rights. Um, we have a complete different situation in the armed forces. No one singular difference with the civil power. And we have a very, a very developed, conscious about uh, human rights violations uh, and a very active promotion of human rights, protection of human rights. And I suppose that it is today 
a very clear consensus that human rights cannot be accepted by violation or touch uh, now or no, we hope in the future. No, we, 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 we made big progresses. If you compare with other countries, even out of the region, with the violation of human rights in different places, we are really, we did, we, we did the best work by, by far, with publications, with, uh, with um, commemorations, with uh, concrete uh, prosecution of the people that violated the human rights, etc. Using the regular laws of Chile, and this is very important, we didn't provide or we didn't, we didn't produce exceptional laws to fight against violation of human rights. We have used the same criminal laws we have had before uh, the dictatorship. 